And welcome to Double Talk. My name is Mark Steffen. I'm Michael Mandel. You know, you gave us a countdown, but I remember hearing one. Did you hear one? You're never supposed to hear one, Michael. Oh, you That's don't? how they do oh. it in the real world of professional really, television. Really? That's how? So Three, why two, even have it? You see the one. You don't hear it. Oh, I didn't see it. But there's no one here to see it. I know. Right. So. So I was, you know, just tying one on before, so. Tying one on? Yeah, right here. You don't hear the one. Yeah, but that's why it's here. Oh. Well, now. Yes. We have a, we have a lot to Our talk about. Our colors are like. Uh, very little time to talk about. Bland. More light. Okay. We do have a lot to talk about, and uh, let's not talk about it. You know, what's the big thing that divides the country? Uh, the Mississippi River. That's correct. So you got the one The Mason Dixon line. Uh, take it. Yes. That's it. That's the 40, it. 38th parallel. Uh, yes, Korea, and one uh, percent versus ninety-nine percent. That, that, That's uh, true. Yes, but uh, you know, aside from that, f light beer, full real, body beer, real, real beer. Yeah. Yes, uh, but you, you also you have, you have your agenda, and you have your conservatives, liberals, conservatives. Never mind the war, the war of the sexes, liberals and conservatives. Ooh, and there's ways you can take a test to to figure out who's who. You may not even know yourself. Well, you know what surprises me. Over and over again, we have had in the past, what, 20 years, a, a real pivot line very close to the 50% uh, Democrat, Republican. Not that Democrats can't be conservative or Republicans can't it's be liberal. very, very it's, evenly they're balanced. They're so balanced that there must be just two types of people. So apparently you have a way to figure out something between liberals and, and conservatives. Well, the variations between those two seems to be such a small number as to be negligible, right? Yeah, they're pretty close together. So um, conservatives I'm are generally characterized. What? I'm one of those in between the liberal and the conservative. I'm neither. You always want to be neither. That's why you think you're a libertarian, but you're really a a uh, very liberal guy who is uh, uh, apprehensive and paranoid. Who said that? No, I'm not necessarily a libertarian. No, because I couldn't even give you a definition of it. Oh, well, yes. But, you know, the things that make you liberal is, oh, you majored in the arts. That's one thing. That's uh, one way of looking, yes. Two, yes. Uh, well, huh. I, I don't know, you, you uh, know how to enjoy yourself. <laughs> I don't think conservatives really do. Uh, it's true. You're well, kind of neat, like a conservative. Neat and tidy. Are you neat? You're, don't look nah, my Your room. house isn't that tidy, but, but you like things to be slightly orderly. Well... Uh, you know, Goodness. you mentioned the arts. Yes. Uh, conservatives, conservatives tend to be afraid of the arts. They fear it, and they don't trust it because it's wild and, and therefore, unmeasured. Right. It's and it's it's culture, and I think the only culture they like is is yogurt. I don't know. No, but, uh, uh, liberals love yogurt. You know, it's like categorizing perhaps, and I hope I'm not uh, uh, offending anybody. Some of who might be friends and who might have been friends. You think an accountant likes things orderly yes. and conservative and predictable and and not allowing anything to go awry, to have all their ducks in order and uh, artists just let the doves fly and uh, artists would be more of a liberal uh, way of thinking about uh, that. Right? Yes, as a glittering generality, you could say that. But, but there are things that make people, you know, I think uh, people who like the olden days think the olden days are better because you know we weren't so wild. You know all this stuff with uh, with uh, uh, yeah. gays getting married and women deciding to uh, have their pregnancies terminated because it's their pregnancy. Well, I hope I never hear you say in my day. I'll tell you things were everybody. Well, okay, let's go. I could go on forever. I know. We only have, we yes, know that. Yes. Now listen. Here's the thing. That this is from the, uh, Time Magazine, February 24th. Time Magazine is a conservative magazine, I believe. It is. Uh, yes. uh, too bad for Newsweek, which is slightly more liberal and gone right, and gone. Uh, okay. Here, they have kind of a quiz on how to judge your personality to reveal your politics. Give me the quiz. Give me the quiz. Are you going to give it to me? All right. Here we go. A ask me a question. Okay. Would you say this person is liberal or conservative? Yes. They, uh, they have an interest in fusion cuisine. What is that? New, inventive stuff yes. for people who are tired of eating the same old spaghetti yeah, and meatballs. You know, where you take Asian and Italian and fuse them together. Now you got a new uh, trend. Italy Asian. Something like that. Something like that. They do that. Or just, uh, you know, they have Pacific so who's that? Rim. Liberal or conservative? Fusion cuisine. Uh, mostly people who want to try new things and are willing to give it a shot. So or be a liberal. Liberal, that's right. Liberals, is here it says, are, are they have a trait that's 
deals with openness to experience. Openness to experience. And attracted to novelty for its own sake. They're willing to try something new. If they don't like it, fine, they move on. You know, on. it says in the magazine, which is a conservative magazine, novelty for its own sake. Novelty could actually give you pleasant surprises. You don't know. You, it's you not hope, for its own sake. Well, you hope it does. Well, you've had fusion food, right? Sure. You like it? Yeah. I fused... Um, <laughs> I fused you Mexican fused your food. fingers together while you were cooking. Once. I fused. I went to. I went to a fusion restaurant where yes. they served Mexican food and Jewish food together. Uh oh. Restaurant was called Casa Hadassah, and it was pretty good. Yes. Well, now you owe Hadassah ten percent of that. Yeah. Here's one. Okay. Keeping keeping your workspace neat. Liberal conservative. Let's see. My workspace is a mess. And I'm a liberal, so I guess it must be a conservative trait. Well, it says conservatives score higher on a trait called conscientiousness. And they're more likely to value organization, order, and self-control. Uh, higher. Oh, are we having the picture of the fascist thing? Is oh, we haven't had that up there. We don't yet. have that yet? Okay. Self-control. You can be self-controlled and not being neat. You know, I look at the mess around my desk. Yes. I can usually find something within three minutes. I usually find what I'm looking for too. In five minutes? Three well, minutes. <laughs> Could, depends on what it is. If it's not on my desk, then it's another 20 minutes. If it's minutes. still alive, I can find it yeah, much quicker. Yeah, because it's moving. Okay, okay, the next one is being okay with a partner looking at porno alone. If you don't know about it or if you hear about it? No, you know about it, but they're looking at it without you. Well, I think that you're looking at the idea that liberals are more open about sexuality. And they're okay with, uh, you know, you're, if you're, you're okay with your partner having multiple other partners, right? In their head. Well, it says here liberals tend to have less conventional notions of what is proper in a committed or romantic relationship. So, you're, you know, not, you're not threatened as oh, much. It's those people who, you know, you're in a restaurant and you're not allowed to look at somebody else from the other sex because they might be good looking. How can you not? You know, the thing that makes you actually go with the partner that you have chosen yes. is the ability to be able to see what is out there in the first place. If you lose that, then you lose uh, interest in your uh, environment. Well, I don't, I don't believe one should walk around with blinders on the whole time because uh, then you're going to miss out on whatever it is you're looking you're, at. You know, you can't sleep with everybody. I mean, I've tried, but it just doesn't work. Well, and there's not enough penicillin, Michael. Well, that's true. Okay, here's another one. Preferring Times Square, where you have a lot of, you know... Oh, Times Square in New York. New York, a lot of chain restaurants and chain stores. I thought you were doing a mathematical equation. No, Times, Times Square. Times R Square. Yeah. Yeah, preferring the Times Square area to the Metropolitan Museums of Art in New York. M museum. Museum of Art. Yes, well, I would say that Times Square is your more, uh, let's say, proletariat type of entertainment. I, you know, Times Square also has many good plays, which are very... Not Times Square, but I mean... Times Square itself. There's plays? Yeah, they have plays around Times Square. Oh, okay. I mean, the, the experience of Times Square. Oh, experiencing it. You mean yeah. the glitter and the lights the glitter, and all the those... The glitter, the restaurants. Advertisements for uh, Japanese uh, media companies. Yes. Yeah, yes, and it's all, it's all brand name stuff. You know, I like that place. Else, but uh, again, the Museum of Art is all... Uh, it's art and culture. Yes. The well, thing conservatives are afraid of. I like both. Yes, culture. Well, you know what they like? The thing in art that conservatives like is realism. The closer you are to what the object is, because they want to pin down reality. And realism in art pins down reality for them. And you say, oh yeah, that looks just like it. Well, <laughs> that's, that's like a Gilbert Godfrey's uncle saying, I like something, I like it if, if it's a joke about something that I do. You know, it should be something I know about. Um, art, though, is an expression Ab of the human situation. And can be abstract. Yes. Okay, here's, the, here's one more. Or two more. Liking cats more than dogs. Which one do you, which you think likes cats more than dogs? Uh, what if you don't like pets? What do you like better? Well, well you have a cat. Well, I like dogs and I like cats, and I, I like them both for different reasons. Um, Ooh, what does that mean? Now, liberals have you been, like, is, does this have anything to do with fusion cuisine? <laughs> you fuse a dog no. and a cat? And you no, a, no, no. We like uh, Chinese like cats and Koreans like dogs. Well, it depends on how you cook yes. them. Yes, well, right. Yeah. Uh, liberals, oh, I hope I didn't offend anybody there. Well, I don't care. Oh, listen, it says here, liberals have been shown to value loyalty and obedience in pets. What? Less 
oh, than conservatives okay. do. <laughs> because dogs are loyal and obedient. Yes. Oh, and you could whip them into submission. They must be obedient. Yeah, some people just get dogs to say, I have a dog, and then they treat them like a dog. Well, here's another one. Believing children should respect authority. Well, I, we I, I believe children should respect me, but as a child, I wouldn't necessarily respect authority. So. And, you, and you will know authority anyway. I know, I know authority. Well, it says your conservatives tend to value obedience more so, than liberals do. Well, of course they do, because it's blind following regardless of That's questioning values. Right. Blind obedience values. is what they value. Well, I, I was Just a like good Hitler. experiment who wanted blind obedience. Yes. And then he got it, too. Sure. Because it wasn't blind obedience, necessarily, because there were certainly a lot of physical threats, I think, to your well-being if you didn't follow what he wanted you to do. So, Exactly. You, you, you obeyed because of... Uh, or else. Strict consequences. No. Very strict. Now. I noticed the, uh, the other day in the Las Cruces Sun News, there was an article. They still publish that, huh? So far. Okay. But if they keep doing what they're doing, they well, everybody be in calls. Er, they print everybody's uh, sound off that says, "Oh, you printed a picture that I didn't like, so I'm never going to get your paper." Right. I get it 365 days a year, but I didn't like one picture, so yeah. Yeah. That sounds like a conservative view. That does. One it? transgression and you're out. Well, we know one transgression just means other transgressions. What about all the good things that Sun News does? Name like, three. It prints the comics. It prints Sudoku and it prints the crossword puzzle. Okay. Uh, I don't like the new crossword puzzle, though. Yeah, it's not as good as the old one. No. Uh, one thing that Sun News did the other day, when uh, a lady from Santa Fe came down, she was sent down here by Governor Susana Martinez. A lady? Her name is Hannah Scandera. She is the did education... Did you make that up? She's a secretary... Made up name? No. Oh. Her name, she's the education secretary designate. Her, uh, she's not been approved to be the education secretary. How long has she been this? A couple of years now. Is Hannah Scandera related to uh, Hannah Barbera? No, it's uh, Hannah Montana. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's, I mean, she's done well for herself. And uh, she's, so the Sun News called her Secretary of Education. Oh, that's she, Sun News. They can't tell the difference. Well, you know, because it's a weird name to be called. What is she called? Secretary of, of Education. Of education. Designate. Designate. So Who is the designate? She's designated, but not installed. You, well, you don't call somebody Secretary of Education installed. Do she you? hasn't been. No. No. But I, it's probably not going to happen. So anyway, now Las Cruces made the 10 best, the top 10 list. You want to schmooze about this? Nah. Uh, you know why what? she hasn't been voted? Because nobody feels that her qualifications are That's acceptable right. for the job. But uh, things are working out okay for the governors. And uh, that's okay for her. Well, she's never going to get uh, no, never. designated either. Okay, you can go on to your next thing. We're, we're moving on. No, what here. I'm saying is Las Cruces made another top ten list. And that is the list of best cities of the future. Las Cruces I came can't in wait. 10. I can't wait till the future gets here. Oh, there it is. Wait. Oh, oh. you know, c coming to work today, I, I call this work. Yes. Uh, nobody else does. But uh, I'm thinking, this is a pretty good city. You know, there's a lot of variety. I was thinking today, I, I take somebody to lunch who's 94 years old. And I'm thinking all the places we could go and uh, there, there's a variety of things to do. Many places are certainly acceptable or better. Our town doesn't look like a city of the future though. No, it doesn't. Uh, we have some. Of but those. there are a lot of, you know, we have a lot of factions. We have a lot of conservatives here, you know, very stick in the mud things. We have a lot of good liberals here and uh, we, pretty much have a dialogue. Our city government and county but government... What's that got to do with the future, Michael? The future, the future. is... is it, you find the future in the present, and the present is not bad here. We have a lot of variety. We hit the 100,000 uh, uh, person mark. Yes. We have a spaceport. Yes. But and we don't have flying cars. But we're taking off now, and we'll come back in a, a few minutes. We'll be back right after these few words, in the future. We'll tell you what we think about the future. In the present. Located away from the crowds, but close to home. Come in throughout the day for Jazzercise, the world's dance fitness leader for nearly 40 years. Treat yourself to a relaxing massage. Or unwind the lounge area or outside on the balcony with friends. La Buena Vida Women's Club, located and designed with women in mind. For information, call Diane at 650-9721. Hey! 
you come here. Do you want to know the news? The Las Cruces channel is now on seven days a week. So keep it right here. See us today and discover why our service is second to none. In business for over 17 years, we have the right car for you. When you buy a vehicle from Fiesta Motors, we do everything possible to ensure your satisfaction. Located at the corner of El Paseo and Main, see you there. Celebrate Fiesta Motors, we're buying a car, is always a celebration. Well, thank you, and welcome back to the future. And we are right going here. to be in the future. In you know, we are going to be one of the best cities in the future. You know, top ten is pretty good. We're we're, we're the tenth, right behind Houston. Yeah. But well, see, we have a spaceport, so I think that's that's what put us in the top ten slot. Yes, I think they just granted us. A, they said, "What are we going to do for number ten? We could do any city in America. Let's do the spaceport city. We already have. You know, White Sands is pretty." futuristic because we're making weapons for the future. And, and rockets of all kinds that yeah. go to the moon. And so it's kind of cool. Work. We have a lot of technical things here, technological but, things. You know, I remember years ago, 30 years ago, they promised us flying cars. And we still don't have our flying car. There's a, there's a flying Whoa. car. Whoa. I have that. You have that? I do. You get good mileage? Well, you know, it's hard to, when cars are parked on the street, it's hard to take off. Oh, we just hover. Well, to get there, yeah. Uh, in 1932, they were predicting uh, f you know, flying cars. I think Jules Verne in the late uh, 1800s was predicting flying cars. Well, the the Jetsons had, cars. had flying cars in the 60s. Well, we're getting more three-dimensional. You know where we're putting all our technology? Not into necessarily flying cars, but faster and faster communication on the internet and, and more things to entertain people. Like in the movies? That's what we care about. The movies are... Like in the movies. And luckily, CGI. And luckily for us, uh, the Allen Theaters, the, did the uh, Video 4 downtown, they were going to close it down because it's the only theater left in town that has nothing but film projectors. Except for the Fountain Theater. And it's getting harder and harder for uh, theaters to get films that are uh, shown on film, uh, which that have to be pulled through uh, sprockets. And now the Video 4 says it's going to be getting digital projectors. Probably the used ones of theaters who've had them for the last five years. Exactly. But it's still good. You know, I'm really surprised and a little shocked, at, but happy that they're doing this because Video 4 was ready to be, you know, dumped. Well, they're still going to tear it down when the time is right, and then they're going to build an eight, a video eight. theater, which is good. And then it'll be, it'll be state of the art. Right, but for the next, next three years, we have... At least we have something to go to. Right. If they're still going to do cheap movies, I don't know how they make money on cheap movies. God. Concessions. On popcorn. Popcorn. Sure. They make more. All theaters make more money on concessions. Do you than buy they do popcorn when you go to the movies? Never. Ever. Right. Or drinks. Never. Well, number one, I only eat organic, Your own popcorn. organic oh. corn. They don't serve organic uh, popcorn. Yeah, because once it's popped, uh, it knocks off anything bad anyway. It yeah, explodes it off. It. No. it knocks off all those dirty things that you people who only eat organic all stuff. All the chemicals? Yeah. yeah, all the chemicals get burnt out. And they, I wish they served coffee in movies. They don't do that. They or, don't? Or iced tea. They don't have that. It's all sugary, high fructose drinks. So I bring my own. That's why I bring my own hurricanes. Yes. Yes. You know, you can't my get ties. The, my ties and uh, your daiquiris. ties. Daiquiris. Yeah, things like that. What so, else? There's interesting things going on here. Well, there, speaking uh, we of movies... We want to get through this list. There's a film screening uh, today at 2 o'clock. Uh, it's called The Harvey Girls. Oh, that's for the last show. There's The Harvey Girls. You said you dated one. Or did you say you dated somebody named Harvey? I can't remember. No, no, no. Uh, Harvey Yetta. Oh, Harvey Yetta. No, The Harvey Girls, is, it's an interesting story. In fact, I've, I've been to the Harvey, Harvey Museum in Blaine, New Mexico. Uh, the Harvey Did you say Belen? Bel Belen, Belen, New Mexico. Uh, these are at train stops along the route, and the Harvey houses were at each train stop depot, and the Harvey girls lived there and they worked there, and uh, it was employment for the girls uh, during the, the Depression and afterwards, 
and uh, they weren't supposed to fraternize uh, romantically with the men customers. Well, who would want to, those men customers? That's why the girls lived upstairs usually. Yes. And so... You know, um, you don't do that now when you go places, plane to, pl you know, airport to airport. You know, you know, you don't have these people. No. And so anyway, there's a, there's a screening tonight of the movie called The Harvey Girls at the Railroad Museum. The city museum down there by the tracks. What's the capacity of that place? Well, I, I mean, know. what, about 20? <laughs> the first 20 who get there get a seat. <laughs> and save me what? The rest of you have to sit on the laps of old Harvey girls. That's 2 o'clock today at the Railroad Museum, the Harvey Girl mov uh, movie. Coming up soon. Now, Eat. also today, yes. at 1 o'clock, we don't want to go. If you don't want to go to that, because. Yes, you, what else is there? You can go to the oh. Atkinson Recital Hall at the university to see a day of percussion. There will be all kinds of percussions down there beating drums and xylophones and marimbas and tom-toms and anything else you can hit with a stick. They do this every year. I think I went to something like that. It was pretty good. Percussion is amazing. It's, it is. It's, it's, it's the most you know primal it, mu uh, music we have. Well, it is very much like music. Except it's not melodic, is it? Uh, it could be Although melodic be. because they have different... Well, xylophones. You know, Randy was in, Randy uh, Granger was yes. in... Uh, uh, did you see Iliad? Yes, I did. That was uh, pretty good. I, I mean, Randy was good. I saw the same performance as you did. Were you there? And, you sit uh, on my lap? And so, yeah, so today's a percussion today at NMSU. Now, also, starting, starting tonight and going all weekend long into next week, it's Mardi Gras season. Hooray! And well, Lent. The, the 40 right days the up to Lent, right? Is it after Lent? No, it's 40 before days. Lent? Lent, uh, Mardi Gras comes 40 days before Lent. That's Is right. this true? Those of you who know anything about uh, Catholicism here, anybody? Anybody? No. Anybody? Anyway, you well, what are you giving up for Lent? I don't have to. Yeah, I, I'm giving up uh, Catholicism. <laughs> but only for those 40 days. I, it's going to be tough. I, I'm giving up uh, what? Organic liquor stores. Beef. You're giving up robbing liquor stores? Yes. Wow. Just this one time for Lent. Uh, I, now I'll know when to go into a liquor store because it'll be safe for the next 40 days. That's right. Mark that. You ever been to, have you been to Kelly's yet? Did you get to Kelly's? Yes, I've been to Kelly's. Yes. They didn't have the prices on very many things yet. No. So well, I didn't buy very many things. I know. You don't want to stand there asking them, oh, no. is this close? No, but. You know what? We should do a Mardi Gras taste test. What should we? Well, we'll let's we'll taste do Mardi Gras drink next week. We'll we taste will. Mardi Gras drinks. How about Mardi Gras, we'll do that. F just for you. On TV, we'll, we'll taste them for you. Is there Mardi Gras food? Uh, pigs? No, no, no. But it's called Fat Tuesday, so you're yes. supposed to eat a lot. Okay. Eat well, maybe five times a day, I would say. No, no, no. Five times a day? We'll, we'll find out something. We'll see if there's a if Mardi Gras menu. And we'll, we'll, we'll mention that next week. Oh, you know, De La Vega's having a party on uh, Mardi well, Gras. Hey, pasta could be one of the things. Pasta skeletons. <laughs> well, What the heck's that about? Well, today, uh, from 1 to 2.30 at the University Museum. Today? You can make pasta skeletons. Yeah, it's free. Bring the kids. It's a fun thing to do for kids. You can make skeletons out of pasta. Do you actually have to kill people and take the pasta out of their body? Yeah, well, only that's if you're in the advanced class. Oh, the advanced class. I didn't know that people were made out of skeletons that made out of pasta. So, well, you know. Be, no wonder people like to eat uh, humans, you know, cannibalism. Okay, everybody likes pasta. Right, yeah. so. Uh, yeah, I couldn't figure that, that one out. going on. Now, um, yeah, you, you had a quiz. I about, had a quiz. Uh, oh, did you want to do the how quiz? To live, uh, what are we doing? The quiz about uh, death? Test that could save your life? Okay. Yes. What is that test? This is a test about dementia. Uh, somebody puts up pictures of, uh, oh, let's say, can you name these people? Well, how does that help you pass a test? You know, one of the things, dementia is when you're just starting to lose it, right? When you can't remember, you go, you know that guy that we went to, you know, there with, or we saw that in that guy, you know, that at the means, thing, at the thing. Yeah, that's, uh, you're, you're le losing it. By the way, this is, those of you can't tell, oh, I don't want to give it away, but if, if you know what Jay Leno looks like. Yeah, but what are, how, do you, how can you tell if you're losing it mentally? Well, what you do is you look at a face, well, one of the things you should do to keep you from getting dementia is do these little tests about when you start to think of something, try to get to the answer, not yeah. give it up, just keep going for it. Also doing things like crossword puzzles apparently help. Anything to stimulate Sudoku the brain. Sudoku or Sudoku. Or Watching this show. This show, remember our names, uh, Estavio and Eugenio, that's our names. And uh, so yeah, anything you can do to stimulate the brain, exercise. 
it takes keep blood to exercising. The brain. You breathe wanna, deeply. Is the want to keep your possible. veins moving? You should. Uh, I went to a heart healthy class uh, last night, and uh, they tell you two and a half hours of exercise a week. And it turned out you had a heart. No, I, I didn't qualify for the class. Yeah, it didn't work. Uh, here, ass assess your sleep quality uh, for Parkinson's disease. Uh, yeah. If you have tremors, you wake up. Uh, do you act out your dreams through talking or fighting? Who doesn't? Ask your wife. Uh, sign of an REM sleep disorder. Are you having problems with smell? Well, I, I wasn't until just recently. Uh, if you can't smell pungent foods like garlic, oh, give How it How do up. you know you can't smell them? If you put garlic in front of yourself and you can't smell it, you are in big trouble. Mm. If, let's say, you fart like I just did, what do you smell? I can't say that on television. Oh, you can't? I guess you have Parkinson's. Uh, and if you've been dealing with constipation for a month or longer. Constipation? For a month or longer. That means your diet is messed up. Well, it can mean a lot of things, but uh, that's one of them. There's five tests. We'll go over the five tests. Uh, Alzheimer's disease. You should be able to smell uh, peanut butter from either nostril at a distance of 12 inches. I see. I'm not worried. Maybe butter. it depends on the peanut butter. Uh, here's the thing. We tested on a 9-year-old and a 10-year-old. Uh, they passed this. Uh, to tell if you have an early risk of death, Sit down on the floor with your legs crossed and get up without using your hands to push you up. That just means you're limber enough to do that. Yes, well, you see. Can you I, do that? I did test this when you I did read this. I did. Okay. I smelt that peanut butter too, but I ended up getting it in my nose because until I smelt it, it was... It was I, I, I know that I can do that. And likelihood of future disability. Uh-huh. Uh, try... Do we all have that? What do you have? We all, we all have a likelihood of future disease. Try to, try to open a, a, a jar. Oh, by the way, there's Harold Ramis, who died uh, this week. This you know what? Past he, week. He had an early risk of death because he died, he was what? 69, I think. Something, yeah, 69. He just made 69. He's one of the top comedy writers, directors, and actors for the, of the past 30 years. He started he with uh, Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters. He was in a lot of those uh, movies wrote, with uh, Bill Murray. And... Uh, well, he's he one of the writers on Animal House. You probably won't realize you're missing him, but you'll miss him. Yeah, he's in a lot of classic movies, and he wrote, wrote and or directed a lot of classic movies, like Robert De Niro and uh, Analyze This. Yes, Analyze, Analyze that. This. That was pretty good. It didn't get enough credit. He wrote of course, De Niro that. was good. Yeah. Now, we have Aunt Rainey coming up. Uh, now. Now. This weekend and next weekend. Yes. So you want to see that? It's kind of about the life of Lenny Riefenstahl. Tom Smith wrote it. And, oh, by the way, here's the NMSU Chapel. That's yeah. the, the new spiritual center. Not being paid for by taxpayer money. So Non-denominational. So Remember, next, uh, next, next, I think, Saturday, March, March 7th. March 7th, Pancake Day. Just eat pancakes. So we're out of time. Thanks for joining us. Those look good. Go have pancakes right now. We're, we're going to go have pancakes and daiquiris right See now. See you next week. Daiquiris. I like that. Daiquiris are good. Daiquiris Let's are go for daiquiris. Pancakes. We'll see you. We're going to go eat daiquiris. Pancakes. Yes. Anyway, that's it for Double Talk.